For the debate, recognize a member from the PN Carlton. Thank you very much, Speaker. It is my pleasure to rise today to debate uh, the throne speech um, by the Liberal government on behalf of Patrick Brown and our Progressive Conservative Caucus. Uh, Speaker, I would be remiss if I did not start uh, my remarks today uh, without congratulating my friend and my colleague, former City of Toronto Councillor, now Member of Provincial Parliament for Scarborough Rouge River, Raymond Cho. Raymond, we're very proud of you in the Progressive Conservative Caucus, and I can tell you, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about my travels into P. and Carleton and in the City of Ottawa this past summer and what my views are on this throne speech, but let me tell you something, Speaker. I had two days where I spent them with Raymond Cho going door to door to door. He had a campaign team of 300 people. They spoke in many different languages, they came from many different cultures, and they came from many different income levels. I left that campaign knowing we were going to win Scarborough Rouge River because of not only that incredible campaign team that was committed to fight on the issues that mattered most to people in Scarborough Rouge River and across the province of Ontario, which are health care and hydro, but because we also had a star candidate with a fair degree of credibility and a great deal of affection from his constituents. And I was very proud. I knew that we would win that seat those first two days that I went campaigning with him. Now, Speaker, it brings us to this point because this throne speech is a great deal of surprise to, I'm sure, Conservatives. It tells you about the anger that's out there across the province of Ontario on the key issues that matter most to mothers and fathers, grandparents, small business owners, and people who are trying to make ends meet. The message that I heard in Scarborough Rouge River was the same message that I had heard over the entire summer in my constituency of Nepean Carleton and throughout the rest of Ottawa. Let me start with a meeting I had with the public at the Greeley Community Centre just last spring. Almost 250 of my constituents showed up to meet with Fiona Crean, the Hydro One Ombudsman, and to talk about their concerns, their complaints, and their anger, not only at Hydro One, but at the hydroelectricity mess in the province of Ontario under this Liberal government. 250 people showed up on a hot Ottawa evening, and they had a clear message for Kathleen Wynne. Enough is enough. Later on in the summer, Speaker, I did my 11th annual Barhaven Food Cupboard food raiser. Each year this event has grown, and it's grown not just because my community is generous, which they certainly are, but it's grown because of the need in my community now for people who are not able to afford to put food on the table. People relying on food cupboards across this province has dramatically increased. And as a result of that, Speaker, you're seeing people who need to help their neighbours. And each year, this has, has uh, grown. We had 350 people come out. We raised tens of thousands of pounds of food and several thousand dollars, because I believe neighbours should help neighbours, and that's what we did. But there are too many people in the P and Carleton and across this province and in Scarborough Rouge River who are forced to either pay for the heat or to put some food on the table to eat. And this throne speech speaker didn't address that. I was talking to our finance critic, the member for Nipissing, and we spoke earlier today, and he did the numbers on what this pitiful throne speech, so-called relief, 
on hydro actually means. 36 cents a day. 36 cents a day is what the relief is for the people of Greeley, of Nepean, of Riverside South, of Finley Creek, of Manatick, of Metcalf, of Bell's Corners. 36 cents a day. But I'll tell you something, Speaker, as a former energy critic, the person who was here day in and day out on the gas plant scandal, the arrogance of this Liberal government to give us a rebate of 36 cents a day? When you know what? You know what the former energy minister, Bob Shirelli, said when the $1.2 billion gas plant scandal came out? Here's what he said. Oh, it's just $2 a day, a cup of Tim Hortons coffee. So, Speaker, you know, there's no relief in 36 cents a day when they're adding $2 a day here, another $3 a day there. That's what's happening. They're going to have a, a cap-and-trade scheme, which is going to increase our uh, hydro bills and our gas. We're, we're going to see more scandal at uh, Hydro One because they've taken away our ability to question the government. So why our leader, Patrick Brown, has asked to stop the fire sale at Hydro One. I heard loud and clear in Greeley that people don't think that's the way to go. And then, of course, something they never talk about is the fact that they are the, the largest government in the world, the largest subnational debt in the world. $300 billion. Can you imagine what that will do to the sustainability of our health care and our education system? Now, I want to talk a little bit about education because the government decided they are going to make a commitment for another 100,000 childcare spaces. They've been talking about this forever. However, this is the same government that just two years ago cost this province 40,000 independently operated childcare spaces by going after the mothers and fathers in our communities who provide access to people like me who have children and who want to have their children in an in-home childcare facility rather than an institutional care. That should be my choice as a parent, and this government eroded that choice for people like me. And so they come in today with more expensive full-day uh, care that is going to drive up the cost. And I, and I agree that we have to have choices. But the government didn't cost this. So they had two, two plans. And I want to go back to this because, you know, they mentioned the Ring of Fire. They've been mentioning the Ring of Fire. I've been here since 2006. They have been mentioning the Ring of Fire here forever. This is a government that brought in the single largest sales tax increase in Ontario's history, the HST, and we told them in 2010 when they brought it in, take it off home heating, take it off the electricity bill, and they said no. Both the New Democrats and the Progressive Conservatives in the 2011 election campaigned on taking the 8% off of heat and hydro. They, they uh, campaigned against it. In fact, then Dwight Duncan, the finance minister, said, quote unquote, that was reckless. We were in a minority parliament. The first private member's bill that we voted on won with a combined vote of the New Democrats in the third party and the progressive conservatives, us in the official opposition, to take away that tax. The Liberals voted against it. Now, they lose a by-election last week in Scarborough Rouge River, and I'm finally referring to it now as Scarborough Bleu River because of Raymond Cho. <laughs> Only after they were humiliated at the polls in a seat that we have never won and that they have never lost did they then decide it was time. They then decided it was time to hit the reset button. But I beg of you, Speaker, to find anything they've actually reset on except for the flip-flop on the 8% HST and the long-standing promise they've made since Dalton McGinty was Premier back in 2003 for more daycare spaces. I beg of you to find something that actually resets it. In fact, in fact, one of the first orders of business by this government speaker was to reintroduce all of their old bills. That's a heck of a reset. They're just doing the same things over and over and over and over again. And that's why the people of this province don't find that there's any credibility in this government. 
In fact, the people of this province view this throne speech as the same old, same old. It's a government mired in scandal, let's not forget, five OPP investigations, five criminal investigations into this government. It's a government that is running the largest deficits in the province's history. They've made a mess of the hydro system. In fact, if they actually were to take this seriously instead of taking the 36 cents off a day, and they actually wanted to do something that would lower hydro bills, you know what they would do? They'd look at those green energy contracts that have been broken by the other side, and they would end them. That would save us money. They could actually put forward a credible plan, a thoughtful plan, Speaker, if they wanted to, on how we deal with our surplus energy instead of wasting it and, 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 and uh, subsidizing the sale to other jurisdictions. They would think long and hard about the cheapest and the greenest form of electricity we have, which is hydroelectricity, instead of dumping it, they'd actually harness it. But they didn't. And now let's move to health care. We have a mayor in a small town in Ontario, eastern Ontario, of Trent Hills. His name is Hector McMillan. I spoke to him yesterday. Do you know how he answered the phone? He goes, Hector McMillan, the government of Ontario is trying to murder me. Why? Because this government, who they want to talk about their $70 million in uh, CPP, they want to talk about their 8 percent cut in hydro, they want to talk about this, that, and the next thing. But, Speaker, you know something? They're not spending on the priorities we want. Hector is not getting life-saving treatment for cancer, and he may die as a result of this government's inaction. This past summer, I spent time raising $12,000 for a cancer patient in my constituency, a 22-year-old woman whose cancer therapy is not covered by this liberal Excuse me. Government. Excuse me. I would ask the uh, member from uh, Quinty uh, to withdraw. I will draw. They don't want to listen, and they didn't listen. The only reason they decided that they were going to move forward with a strong speech is because they lost an election. Yep. It wasn't because they miraculously listened to the people of Ontario. It's not because. Uh, point of order. Procedure. It's my understanding she shouldn't be a puny motive. She has no idea what the decision making was behind him. For to impugn that motive, I think, is contrary to the rules of this House. Thank you very much. Uh, Continue, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I appear, it appears that the Liberals may not be feeling comfortable with, with the, truth. the truth. The truth that I've seen it in the P.N. Carlton and in Scarborough Rouge River, in Glengarry, Prescott, and Russell, in Carlton, in Canada, Carlton, in Ottawa West, in P.N. Ottawa South. All of the places I've been to this summer, Speaker, have said the same thing. This government has lost its way. It's not in it for Ontarians anymore. And that throne speech, Speaker, that throne speech is proof. And I made a joke yesterday. I made a joke yesterday that this throne speech will help Kathleen Wynne's approval ratings skyrocket to 17 oh. percent. And I, I and I think the the fact of the matter is you're you're wow. you know if if, if they don't believe me um, and the concerns I'm bringing on the floor from from the events I've had this this summer with 250 people at a hydro meeting, 350 people at a food raiser, 200 people at a cancer fundraiser. If they don't want to believe all those people in the P and Carlton or Scarborough Rouge River who handed them their uh, their uh, I'm not even going to say, but if, but speaker, if they don't want to believe that. Then they should just look at forum. For and you know what? And, and this is my favorite part. These egregious poll numbers. They're, they're not in you know my newsletter. the speaker. They're in the Toronto Star. They're they're in the Globe and Mail. They're in the Sun. This is my favorite part. Like if they can't figure it out from Wynne's atrocious numbers and the, the humiliation in Scarborough Rouge River. If they can't figure that out, they can't believe us as MPPs coming from the opposition benches, what we're hearing our constituency, they, they, they're not in it for you anymore at home. They're not in it, Mr. Speaker, for your constituents. They're in it for themselves and for power. And if you look at, for example, Bill 201, this bill is probably going to actually 
This bill, 201, is going to hamper, uh, in my opinion, it will hamper democracy in the province of Ontario to the pure benefit of the Liberal Party, who is using a cash for access scheme that should be illegal, and they're going to take away my right as a private member and my right as a candidate and my right as a citizen to raise money for my Progressive Conservative Riding Association. But you know something, the difference between me and a Liberal on the front bench that I sit directly across from? I can't give a government contract. If somebody comes to see me, I may raise some issues. I may not even agree with them, but I can tell you something. I'm doing the work that I should be able to do for my constituency, and I really, I really resent the fact that this Liberal government wasted the time of the members in the opposition this past summer through hearings that they didn't even listen to, that they condescended the public to, they didn't listen to any of the amendments, they, they then prorogued the House, the bill died, they're now reintroducing it, they're not serious about anything in terms of consultation, and they come back to this House with this throne speech with nothing in it, they wasted their time, they wasted our time, and we even lost a day of question period as a result of this. And In fact, I think they'll see in two years the big difference between us on this side of the House and them on this side of the House. There'll be a heck of a lot more of us after the election than there are of them, and I think it's because this government has tired on the souls and the minds of the people of this province who time and time again have elected them, but time and time again these folks have proven that they have lost their way. And Speaker, i got to tell you, I'm going to continue to come here each and every day and remind them of what the priorities of the people of Nepean and Carleton and in Ottawa are. And I can tell you I've got my colleagues here. I'm sitting beside, by the way, Speaker, the first person to close a coal-fired plant in the province of Ontario. Leadership by Jim Wilson, our House leader. I'm sitting by one of the youngest mayors ever. Are you still the youngest mayor ever, Mr. Clark? When, uh, when, when he, he was elected first in municipal politics in Brockville, he's come here. He's now our deputy leader. Uh, he has the, the ideas, the views. He understands rural Ontario, Speaker, something that this government doesn't. I sit here with my friend, Lisa Thompson who spent a great deal of time in the agricultural sector before getting elected. We need a whole lot more Lisa Thompsons in this house. And I look at my colleagues, even in the, uh, even in the third party, who, uh, who have worked hard and come here, who are, who are uh, very disappointed with this Liberal government's strong speech, and I think they share our concerns on Bill 201 as well, if I may recall. But the thing is, Speaker, this is a government that hit the reset button, Basically, they thought, you know what, I'm going to go over to Staples, I'm going to buy that one's easy button and we're just going to hit it and, we're, and no one's going to notice. But here's the problem. Everyone did notice. The coverage has been awful. The public is not happy. They can continue to try and shout me down, but, Speaker, I'm going to tell you something. The good people in Nepean Carlton sent me here not once, not twice, not three times, four times, and I'm going to try and get here a fifth time, Speaker, to tell these guys that they're, what they're doing is wrong. And I'm going to use my voice, my strong voice, and I'm going to use my abilities to make sure that the people that I represent from everywhere from Bell's Corners down to Burnt Rapids and Metcalf are going to have their voices heard. And I can tell you, when I walk down the street, Main Street, in Manitick, they're angry about hydro, which wasn't fixed yesterday. They are angry about the state of the health care system, particularly the doctors that I represent. They don't feel like they're represented. In fact, Speaker, last week was the first day of school. And as you know, I have an 11 year old daughter. She's been brought up basically here on, in this assembly. And I walked in to the school. She's in grade six now, Speaker. And I've known many of these parents for the past number of years. And my daughter's friend, her little classmate, her mom has never spoken to me about politics from junior kindergarten. And this is why I think the Liberals shouldn't just heed what happened in Scarborough Rouge River, they should listen to this conversation. I walked in and the mother looked at me, shaking her head, and she said she prorogued. And I said, oh, you're following the news, Kathleen Wynne prorogued. She goes, yeah, we, it's too long, we gotta get rid of her. I'm sure this mother probably was a Liberal. And I was so shocked when I sat there at the school and for the first time this individual wanted to talk to me about politics because you have lost your 
way. And with that, Speaker, I look forward to hearing the Liberals try and defend themselves in the two minutes and questions and comments. Thank you.